This nonfiction book about science is called Shapes in the Sky, a book about clouds. The author is Josepha Sherman. The illustrator is Omar Wesley. Josepha Sherman is an author who uh, wrote for young learners as well as for grown-ups. Her most famous book for grown-ups is called The Shining Falcon. So when you're an older reader, you can pick up one of her books and enjoy it also. But she wrote a series of books on science topics and other topics for younger readers. The illustrator, Omar Wesley, has lots of books that uh, he has done in his lifetime, including three other books um, that you see here in addition to Shapes in the Sky. Um, two of those other books are with Josepha Sherman. One is with this woman, Nancy Lowen. And it will, will not be too hard to find other illustrations by Omar Wesley. Clouds curl across the sky like dragons. They sail above the trees like scoops of vanilla ice cream. Clouds float and fly in all shapes and sizes. What makes a cloud? Clouds are made of trillions of tiny water droplets and ice crystals. These droplets and crystals hang in the air. They are so light that even the smallest breeze can keep them from falling to the earth. Clouds can look as solid as mountains, but they are as light as smoke. Clouds drift and shift. They stretch across the sky. Winds push the clouds and change their shapes. Cumulus Clouds Scientists have names for different types of clouds. Cumulus clouds are full and puffy. They are piled up like heaps of whipped cream. They often appear on summer days. Cumulonimbus clouds. Cumulonimbus clouds can make hail or stir up tornadoes. Lightning flashes deep inside them. Thunder rumbles through their thick billows. These clouds are also called thunderheads. Cumulonimbus clouds can be as tall as 60,000 feet, just over 18,000 meters. That's twice as tall as the world's highest mountain. Imagine you're Spider-Man and you're looking straight down onto a city street from the highest buildings in the world. That's what this illustration attempts to show. And at the very top of those buildings, there are little layers of white cloud. Stratus clouds. Stratus clouds hang low in the sky. They hide the tops of hills and tall buildings. Stratus clouds often appear in the winter. They can bring raindrops or flakes of snow. Cirrus clouds. When a cloud rises very high, it reaches cooler air. If the air is cool enough, the water droplets inside the cloud freeze into tiny ice crystals. Trillions of these crystals hang together and form cirrus clouds. Cirrus clouds float high in the air, sometimes above the other clouds. They can look as wispy as feathers. They can curl like lizard tails. Cloudy days, cloudy nights. Cloudy days are often cooler than clear days. The clouds keep sunlight from warming the earth. Cloudy nights are warmer than clear nights. As the sun sets, the land and oceans cool off. The clouds keep heat near the ground like a giant lid. All the clouds in the sky. 
Some clouds swirl like fog against treetops. Some float above mountains. Some bring thunder and rain. Some sail high in the sky, riding the fastest winds. This cloud is a cumulus cloud. This cloud, this dark one, is a cumulonimbus cloud, the thunderhead. These low clouds are stratus clouds. These high clouds with the ice crystals are the cirrus clouds. In a second grade science classroom, you might learn about these four kinds of clouds. If you take nimbus and cumulus and put them together, you get a cumulonimbus cloud. In an eighth grade science classroom, you might have to learn a chart like this. Cumulonimbus, cumulus, stratus, cirrus, those are the ones we've learned. But then you can learn about stratocumulus, altostratus, altocumulus, cirrocumulus, all the different kinds of combinations of clouds. Here are some resources you can follow up and investigate. These two are especially helpful. This is NASA, where our space program has lots of good scientists learning about things, including the weather. NASA and this one underneath it is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association. And it's a group of scientists that are studying how the climate works, including the weather. Of course, the most fun part of being a scientist, even a young scientist, is doing experiments. Here's how you can make a cloud. You're going to need an ice cube tray, some water, a metal dish, a jar, a flashlight, and maybe a big brother or sister or a grown-up to help you. Here's what you do. Make sure you have a grown-up, an adult, a parent, a big sister, somebody who can help you. Fill the ice cube trays with water and let them freeze in the freezer. You might already have some in there. Take several ice cubes out of the tray and place them in the metal dish. Let the ice cubes stand in the dish until the dish is really cold. Then, pour about an inch of warm water into the jar. Take the jar of water and the dish of ice cubes into a darkened room. Don't be afraid. Use a flashlight to shine light on the dish and the jar. Place the dish over the top of the jar. Watch as a cloud forms near the top of the jar as the warm water evaporates, rises, and then condenses. If it doesn't work the first time, that means you're learning about science. Do it again until you can make it work. That's the fun. With Josepha Sherman mixing her poetic language with scientific facts, and with artist Omar Wesley providing the drawings, this book has been Shapes in the Sky, a book about clouds.